Let's talk about uh, exciting news, our RS5 Stage 3. Um, I believe we're the first Stage 3 tune on the market. These poor uh, TTE-720s have been selling for quite some time with no tuning support. People have been kind of cobbling together various tuning and tuning boxes and piggybacks and stuff. Um, this is the tune that we ran a 9.9 with in our fully loaded streetcar. Um, about a month and a half, month month and a half ago, uh, we ran a 9.946 at 139.21 miles per hour. Um, no lightning of the car. Uh, we documented what was. Yeah, it had. Did, wait, it had a battery. It had a, it had a battery. It had a, battery. It had a lightweight battery. So a 50 pound weight reduction, which is like a big poop for some people. Um, um, <laughs> but otherwise, total streetable car. Yep. Car drove there, drove home. Um, Incredibly fast, fun, uh, smooth car, and um, it should be live on our website now. It is. It is. Yeah. So if you'd like to go look at the tune on our website, you can. You can browse all the various horsepower levels, but I'll go through it real quick. Um, so our our official advertised numbers on ninety one. Um, we're advertising about 536 crank uh, on 93, 590 crank on E85, 680 crank horsepower and on uh, E60 to E70 blend, 713 uh, crank horsepower. So as, as you can see, as we optimize that octane, we get closer and closer to, you know, kind of the 720 um, archetype advertising with yeah. TTE. Yeah, it was surprising how, how close it yeah, we do. We do have uh, a stage three ECU and TCU files. Um, we recommend running our stage three ECU with a stage three TCU. The stage three ECU file will work with our stage two file currently. Yep. So it is compatible if you don't feel like upgrading right now. The stage three uh, TCU continues to optimize, you know, the tune for the bigger it's, turbos. Yeah, it's all the optimizations for the different shift points. Yeah, and shift points. Um, so required hardware is. This is what you need to run this tune. It's not optional or uh, uh, it, it, the car needs it in order to, to run. It. So you obviously need the TTE 720 turbos. Oh. Um, you can just run the factory inlet pipe. That's what we've done on our production car up till now. We didn't even board it or anything. Uh, we will be coming out with a super duper pipe that flows substantially more than the, the stock inlets. Um, but for the time being, you can just use that. Um, you will need uh, some type of high flow cat, which we recommend ours for racing use. Um, maybe a lot of you that bought high flow cats that were upset that we didn't release a stage two because it didn't matter. Well, you can use it now because the stage three can uh, use the extra flow over OEM. Uh, you will need the four bar map sensors that we list on our site. And uh, you need an ethanol content analyzer if you're going to run any of the e-blended tunes. You don't need that if you're just going to run pump gas. Um, which the, honestly, the 93 octane is really nice. The 91 is great too, 536. But um, you're talking almost 600 horsepower at 93 pump gas. I mean, and it's fast. That's a fast car. 596 foot-pounds of torque as well on 93. So. Very, very excited to release um, th this uh, really great uh, tune to the market. Mm -hmm. We strongly recommend running uh, a good intake like our X34. Yes. Um, and uh, th the other required modification, and I'm, I think I skipped over this, is, is an intercooler kit. Yeah. We currently recommend the Wagner uh, intercooler kit, which does a nice job at this power level. Um, just because you have an intercooler kit doesn't mean it's going to be sufficient. So for the time being, I think the only one that we can validate or recommend wholeheartedly is the Wagner. Uh, but if there's something that looks like an actual sizable upgrade over factory, then great. Um, yeah, so yeah, running, if you have running, any questions, uh, drop them in and we'll be happy to answer them. Yeah, we're running the full kit uh, on the intercooler. There's a heat exchanger and intercooler upgrade. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's what we recommend. Yeah, full kit. Um, yeah, and, and we've track tested this. We just posted a video on Friday, which got a lot of views on YouTube. 
We're taking it again this uh, weekend. Of us driving in on track. Um, yeah, I'll be at the track again this weekend. And um, I've seen mm-hmm. lots of street time. Um, a lot of runs in Mexico. Uh, high elevation testing. Yep. Cold, cold winter testing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it, let us know if you have any questions. All factory safety features are still there. Um, no fudges or workarounds. We've optimized the entire driving experience from shifting to shift points, throttle response, throttle functionality. Uh, very, very proud and excited for this team. Yeah, this is huge. Someone would like to know why stage three RS5 makes less than stage three S4. They're different turbos? Different turbos, different setups, slightly less displacements. Yeah, it's it's different hardware. I mean, yeah, it's gonna make what the, what it's gonna make. I mean, the motors are slightly different. The turbos are very different. It's, it's what's the, what's the actual turbo. difference? I mean, between seven ten and seven twenty, it's sub ten. It's not much. Yeah. Horsepower? Yeah. yeah, we're talking yeah. very small. Percentage. So eight ten is different. Yeah. So, uh, and what was the question? Why does RS five make less than S stage three? Uh, from seven ten. Didn't specify. Didn't specify. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're different cars. They're different motors. They're different cars. Different motors. But you're also talking about tiny, tiny, tiny percentages. I mean, um, we're, we we come up with these numbers where we're saying 680 horsepower. It's not 600. Your car will never make 680.0000 horsepower. You know, every time you get on the throttle, your engine makes a different amount of power. This goes for the dyno as well. Every time we do a dyno run. The power is slightly different from the last pull. Even if we don't change anything, we will never, ever get two runs that are exactly the same. It's the same idea with snowflakes, uh, you know, or apples or people, you know. Uh, there's just no no two same of anything. There's just, there's an infinite set of variables that's contributing to the outcome of everything and anything that happens. So this is the same with, I'm just making the point of not only are they different engines with different turbos installed in different cars with different intercooler systems, different fuel systems. I mean, on paper, they're advertised to be similar, but every specification is essentially different. You know, I mean, substantial number of specifications are different. Then you have one from one car to another don't make the same horsepower. So you could see easily a 10 horsepower variance between two cars. We've seen at this power level, you know, 30, 40 horsepower variances and then you've got the measurement of the dyno so um then the tires on the car and the you know, amount of air in the tires yeah, the other variables that come into play with just well, and then there's the temperature the humidity and all that stuff so all this to say is please use our numbers as as a helpful way to make decisions but if you're really going to sit there and scrutinize one thing's 713 and a totally different car is 718 and why is there a difference i mean the world of, just take about yeah. take everything I said and apply it to that. That's that's not a realistic expectation. I think there's plenty of companies out there that will make it sound like things are really that discreet and simple and easy to digest. Uh, I mean, the factory does, yeah, right? The factory just gives you a nice, even numbered horsepower number or some clever, you know, makes it 333 know. horsepower. Well, yeah, I was gonna say it, 333. They'll, is a make, good they'll make up like these numbers that, that are marketing catchy. But yeah, but they may have like, they probably have like, uh, you know, a, a brain psych, psychiatrist, you know, as much as anything contributing. Like, That's what I'm saying. It's all they're just picking it, a number it's, out of it's thing, a marketing right? number yeah. that, that they're giving you that no car, you know, you, know, can, you can never guarantee a car is going to. So, I mean, all the possible horsepower outcomes you know, on some chart are a cloud of data and you're just kind of like, and of course the data set has a certain standard deviation and variance between the the minimum and maximum. And then you can kind of look at the averages, but that's just not how engines work. They don't make 333 horsepower. It's just how we talk about it as humans with limited marketing ways to communicates uh, information to consumers to make decisions. Yeah. So I think, um, I bet, honestly, this, this might, I'm not, I have not smoked any weed or done any drugs, <laughs> but I honestly think like expressing the amount of power engine makes like as a color is probably more logical than, than a number um, because You're that's literally brand. how undiscreet it is. 
But uh, we, we, we kind of arbitrarily make it really yes. And it's, I mean, it's, so many people forget about you know, this, the area under the curve. There's the, the way it delivers the power. How, how responsive is that power band? So, yeah. Um, yeah. Getting hung up on minute, you know, low percentage differences in, in a peak horsepower number. Is, yeah. Is so so, so then uh, to go full circle, why do we give numbers? Well, because we believe, for example, stage 391 octane, or st stage, stage 393 octane, we quote 590 horsepower. We believe that if there was 20 RS5s out there that got TT 720s, and you, you ran a peak horsepower dyno number on all 20 cars, that you'd arrive at about 590 horsepower if you analyze yep. that data set. That is what this number means. It doesn't mean that your car will make 590 horsepower. We also advertise 493 wheel horsepower. This is the kind of uh, averaged number that we believe that if enough cars were tested, that they would produce about 493 horsepower as a kind of average data set. That's what these numbers represent. They do not represent anything about your specific car exactly or discreetly. All right. Uh, all right, we got some RS5 questions coming in. Would an air-to-air -air intercooler work for this tune? Um, yes. We fundamentally, yes. I mean, we, yeah. Uh, conceptually, yes. In practice, there is not one. Um, you could put one in. The honestly, the intercooler from the S4 tune would work. Yeah, yeah. You know, your charge piping is going. You'd have to redo everything, do a lot of fabrication. And honestly, I think the RS5 intercooler system is it's really okay. Nice. You, it well. you will have yeah, you'll have things like faults for the water pump. You got to either keep that or loop it, or there's some other stuff to consider there too. But yeah, there's fundamentally no reason it wouldn't work. We wouldn't recommend a customer to do that at this point in time. I think yeah, in five years, we certainly when, haven't tested when car values have dropped and people are like getting all jiggy. Yep. And then sure, you know, do whatever you want. It would be like on a race car, it might make sense just to lighten and simplify. Mm -hmm.